Probably the worst showing in quite a while on the Power 5 yesterday. So time to bounce back today. Still on an outstanding 45-26-3 run here on the show, despite 1-3 and three yesterday. Remember, I also gave you a college football winner for Saturday. You can go back and check that out. Today, I've got four short underdogs for you in Major League Baseball. As a reminder, you can always comment down below with any questions or thoughts on these selections. We start with an early game. Phillies, Blue Jays, and I'm going under eight. Now, these teams combined for 19 runs and 34 hits yesterday. Phillies came back to win with three runs in the top of the ninth. Kyle Schwarber, he hits three home runs for the second time in a game this season. But I don't think we're going to be seeing those kind of fireworks this afternoon because Bowden Francis is on the mound for Toronto. Guys, have you seen what Francis has done lately? My word. Three of his last four outings, he has gone at least seven innings and allowed just one hit. Just six hits total in those four starts with two earned runs allowed. 0.41 ERA, 0.36 whip his last three starts. So the Phillies are going to struggle to score runs in this game, particularly early on. I think Francis will give us a big enough cushion where we don't need to worry about that Blue Jays bullpen. Uh, the Phillies, over the last month, just a 97 WRC plus against righties. So, uh, Keep that in mind. I'm also not really a believer in this Blue Jays lineup, particularly when they're facing lefties. They're against Southpaw Christopher Sanchez today. Uh, he may not be as good on the road as he is at home, but one of the highest ground ball rates in all of baseball, along with one of the lowest home run rates. So I like under eight. If you uh, check out the morning wager today with me and Mark Zeno, by the way, you'll get a first five innings bet on that Blue Jays-Phillies game that, again, goes early Uh three o'clock Eastern. So check that show out as well. The Morning Wager with Mark Zinno and I. Make sure you're subscribed to the Wager Talk YouTube channel. Okay, second play for today in the Power Five is the Reds' money line. Plus 125 against the Astros. Bit of an odd series here. Uh, Scheduling-wise, these teams had Tuesday off. Of course, the Reds, they were winners for us on Monday uh, as underdogs here on the Power Five. Remember what I told you on Monday? Astros haven't beaten the Reds since 2016. Now, there have only been seven head-to-head meetings since that time, but I'm going to Take the home team to keep that head-to-head -head win streak rolling today. Good time to face fade Houston starter Spencer Arigetti, in my opinion. Arigetti, now, he has not allowed a run in either of his last two starts. I'm well aware of this. But still poor numbers over the course of the season, including a 1.45 whip on the road and a 6.04 ERA at night. I think what we've seen the last two starts has been a case of Arigetti pitching a little bit over his head due to regress. Meanwhile, Nick Martinez, he's been good for the Reds since moving into the role of starter. I think the Reds are live here. Skyline chili for everybody, hopefully on a Wednesday night. Number three, Mets. Minus 102 on the money line against the slumping Red Sox. We did hit the over in this matchup last night, even though both starters, David Peterson and Cutter Crawford, were much better than I anticipated. But thank you, Red Sox bullpen, for yet another blowup. With a bullpen that poor and a lineup that has now failed to score more than two runs in four consecutive games, guys, Boston's a team you need to be looking to fade. Their playoff hopes are dead. Dead. Meanwhile, the Mets are very much still alive for a wild card berth over in the National League. Six straight wins for them now. Since May 30th, they're a MLB best 53-31. and 31. I just don't see any reason why the Red Sox should be slight favorites here. Before we get to that atrocious bullpen of theirs. They've got Tanner Houck starting. Houck is a guy that I've previously backed here on the show, but he is now way over his career high in innings pitched for a season. Uh, Tyler McGill, he's starting for the Mets, returned to the big leagues with a strong showing last week, albeit against the White Sox, so we don't know how much stock to put in there. But at the end of the day, I just don't think the Red Sox are a team you want to put your hard-earned money on. Fade them. Take the Mets, who are red hot. These are teams trending in opposite directions. Cardinals Brewers. Let's try to get one of these games right, huh? Fourth play in the Power Five. I like the Brewers to bounce back tonight after losing an extra innings last night. St. Louis may have gotten that 7-4 win in 12 innings, but they had to use all of their high leverage arms to do so. Thus, Milwaukee, who almost always has the edge of the bullpen anyway, should have a substantial edge when this game gets to the relievers. Now, I am not necessarily a fan of starter Colin Ray, but I give him a slight edge in a matchup with Sonny Gray, who has been trending in the wrong direction for a while now. 5.62 ERA on the road this season as well for Gray. Uh, so, you, you know, I think he's getting too much respect in the marketplace here. Milwaukee should not be an underdog at home. As I've harped on numerous times, the Cardinals have been more lucky than good this season. They've been outscored by 55 runs despite being a game over 500. Again, don't think they should be the favorites here. 
One more play to come, but first I wanted to remind you that right now at wagertalk.com, you can get a three-day all-access pass for just $49. You can choose as many different handicappers as you'd like. You can, so you can get three days for myself, my partner in crime on the mo- uh, morning wager, Mark Zinno, all of your favorite handicappers. Uh, and we're giving you the freedom to choose when you want to start your three-day all-access. So if you want to wait until Friday so that you can get both Saturday college football and Sunday NFL, go right ahead. It's a great idea. A reminder, I'm now on a 22-10 and 10 college football run going back to last season. All three of my totals to start this season thus far have cashed by double digits, including the under in LSU-USC. Last year in NFL, not only did I end by sweeping my Super Bowl picks, but I swept the first Sunday card of the season as well, going 3-0. Just head over to wt.buzz slash BP to take advantage of this incredible three-day offer. Again, just $49 for three full days of winning selections. That's a $20 savings. Good deal. All right, final play in the Power 5 today is going to be Giants' money line over the D-backs. Did not work out last night when I tried this. Although San Fran... Uh, that, that was a head scratcher. They had the scheduling edge. Uh, they were off uh, on Monday while the D backs were finishing a wraparound series against the Dodgers. But it was the D backs who came out strong. Just not a good outing from Kyle Harrison, who'd been better at home than on the road all season. Giants did rally to get within one run in both the eighth and ninth innings, but just could not get over that hump. I'm going to back them here again, though. Zach Gallen did not have it last time out. That was a painful one for me uh, against the Dodgers. Gallon allowed five runs in five innings. It was the third time in his last five starts that Gallon's allowed at least four runs. So he's not in good form right now. Then again, neither is the Giants' Hayden Birdsong, uh, but I think it's good by low spot on Birdsong. Why? Yes, he had the terrible August, but in July he had a 2.45 ERA. So I think there's going to be a little course correction here. I know the Diamondbacks, the highest scoring lineup in all of baseball, I've mentioned it many times before on the show. Just a good buy low spot on Birdsong and the Giants, who have lost four in a row just one time since mid-June. So that adds to the buy low nature of this play. Let's now recap the Power 5 for 10 in case you missed anything here. Uh, Number one, Phillies Blue Jays under eight. Number two, Reds money line plus 125 against the Astros. Number three, Mets minus 102 on the money line against the Red Sox. Number four, Brewers short home dog on the money line against the Cardinals, and number five, Giants money line over the D-backs. You can let me know what you think of those selections by commenting down below. Also, if you already haven't done so, how about throwing me a like? Smash that thumbs up. Always appreciate the support. Remember, you go to wt.buzz slash bp for all of my premium selections. I'm looking to bounce back on Wednesday. I'm going to have at least two plays, uh, one side, one total. Also, Make sure you're subscribed to the Wage Talk YouTube channel. Like I said earlier, not only do I do the Power 5 daily, but you can't forget about the morning wager with myself and Mark Zinno every Monday through Friday. Mark and I will be on first pitch as well today. So you're getting a lot of me on the Wage Talk YouTube channel uh, here on Wednesday. And that's going to do it for the Power 5. Until next time, let's cash some tickets.